So after months of Infowars warning about an ISIS attack targeting the southern borders and being called conspiracy theorists for doing so, two jihadist radicals tried to stage a Charlie Hebdo style attack at an art show in Garland, Texas. ISIS has since claimed responsibility for the attack. But now the Liberals are out in force blaming the organisers of the event for being provocative as if it's their fault for the fact that these two Islamic nutballs went and tried to shoot up this event. They will condemn and censor everyone. You know, feminists getting irate and outraged over the protein world ad of a thin girl for an advertisement. That's offensive, we need to ban that. But God forbid would they ever condemn violent Islamic extremists, oh no. And did the media respond by valiantly defending the basic fundamental principles that underpin Western civilization? Oh no, God forbid. CNN's top story right now, why Islam forbids images of Muhammad. And in this article, they quote Islamists who say, in many countries, Muslims feel like they are besieged. They completely fail to condemn the actual attack and in some ways actually justify it by suggesting that because this was offensive, it's no surprise that this attack took place. But what people are saying is that there's always this fine line, you know, between freedom of speech and being um, intentionally incendiary and provocative intentionally incendiary and provocative by drawing a cartoon. This is the low state of freedom of speech in this country. I disagree, and I disagree most vehemently. The First Amendment, not the Eighth, not the Tenth, but the First, protects all speech, not just ideas that we like, but even core political speech, ideas that we don't like, because who would decide what's good and what's forbidden? The Islamic State? The government? Inoffensive speech, Allison, needs no protection. Mm. But in a pluralistic society, you have offensive speech. You have ideas. You have an exchange of ideas. You don't shut down a discussion because I'm offended. If something offends me, should I go out and slaughter people? Sure, when course. Jesus Christ was put in a jar of urine, it was called art. Did Christians like it? Of course not. Did they slaughter people? Did they burn embassies? Did they kill a, a, a whole communities? Of course not. This I mean, cannot be sanctioned. Yeah, this uh, cannot be sanctioned. The West must stand up for freedom of speech. It's the core fundamental element of this constitutional republic. And once again, just like we saw after Charlie Hebdo, the pathetic, castrated media is actually censoring the images of this artwork, depictions cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in the very hours after this attack. Sending the message that violence and intimidation works and that free speech, the First Amendment, the very values that underpin democratic free society are less important than offending Muslims. And liberals all over Twitter are tweeting at me how would you feel if there was a Jesus cartoon event? Wouldn't you be offended? Again, actually justifying the attack. Well, if somebody wants to hold a Jesus cartoon event, then go ahead. How would I react? I wouldn't frigging shoot the place up. And then they're saying, well, what about depictions of Jews? What about the Holocaust? I've been consistently against laws which criminalize Holocaust denial because people should be free to say dumb BS. That's part of free speech. That's part of the First Amendment. See, I'm actually consistent in my belief in free speech. I don't believe it should be selectively applied based on who we want to offend and who we're scared of offending. And so I have to remind liberals once again, my free speech rights don't end where your feelings begin. And how do you think the media would respond? How would CNN respond if two members of the Westboro Baptist Church went and shot up a Jesus cartoon event? Would they condemn the attack? Would they accuse the jihadists and their supporters as being extremists? Would they actually be consistent in standing up for free speech? Or would they tacitly defend and justify the Westboro Baptist Church because the images were offensive? 
would they imply that the event organisers were to blame for being provocative? Well, no, never in a million years. And again, this is not just about the right to offend. This is about Islamic extremists trying to enforce Sharia law in the United States, trying to create the preconditions where it becomes illegal to depict Muhammad or offend Muslims. Another interesting facet to this, in the context of the media defending extremists, failing to condemn actual extremists, first we had feminists threatening to bomb Protein World last week, and then on Friday they threatened to bomb a meeting of Gamergate supporters. So as I've said before, you know, at first it was tongue in cheek, but now it's actually coming true. Feminists and other social justice warrior radicals actually share the same belief, doctrines and now behaviour as ISIS terrorists by threatening to bomb people with whom they disagree ideologically. And these leftists will just go to any lengths whatsoever to avoid having to condemn Islamic extremism. They're now trying to make the whole focus about Pamela Geller. Oh my God, Pamela Geller, she said some really offensive things in the past. It's not about Pamela Geller. It's about having the right to stage an event without being shot up by frigging terrorists. And just thank God that there were security guards and cops that were armed at this event. Because it would have been exactly like Charlie Hebdo. Of course, we know during the Charlie Hebdo attack, the first cops that arrived on the scene in Paris basically had to run away because they weren't armed. And these terrorists had guns and rocket launchers. Thankfully, that wasn't the case in Garland. And these two jihadists were taken out without anyone at the event being injured. And thank God that these kind of people exist. Because the very democratic values which underpin our free society are not going to be defended by the yellow belly, castrated corporate media. Rant over. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is Paul Joseph Watson for InfoWars.com.